Hello and welcome everyone again to the second episode of Google Cloud Task. So in this episode, before going forward and setting up everything with Google Cloud Task, there are some prerequisites that you need to carry out before doing so. The first prerequisite is you must have a Firebase project created and must be fully functional working with your Android or iOS application. And the second one is the document you want to make TTL or time to live, there must be two fields included. The first one will be expired time and the second one will be expire in milliseconds. The expired time will be simple first or timestamp and the expire milliseconds will be the same timestamp but will be stored in the milliseconds. So these are the two prerequisites that you need to carry out before setting up everything with Google Cloud Task. So having this in mind, let's go and set up everything with Google Cloud Task. So first of all, open your browser just like this. It can be any browser and simply in the URL search for Google Cloud Console. After this, something like this will be appear in front of you. Simple open this Google Cloud Platform. The Google Cloud Console is a graphical user interface provided by Google Cloud Platform for administrating and managing various services and resources in the Google Cloud Platform. So that's it for the Google Cloud Console. So I told you you must have created the Firebase projects. So after navigating in here, simply you need to select your Firebase project in here. I have selected my Instagram social graph. So just like this you have to select your Firebase project that is fully functional working with your Android or iOS application. So after this done, simply in the search bar, you have to search for Cloud Tasks API. After this, you will see in the marketplace something like Google Task API. Click this and this will navigate you in here. So after it's been loaded, you will see the Google Cloud Task API in here. For me, it's saying try this API and manage this. And also a badge of API is enabled. So in your case, it will not be like this. It will say enable the API. So as this Google Cloud Task is a paid product, so for that you need to enable the billing for your project. So you need to enable the billing so you will be allowed to use the Google Cloud Task API in your project. And there are some key points about billing that you need to keep in mind. The first one is task execution. In the Google Cloud task, we have the queues, a data structure where we enqueue the task and the task remain in the queue until their scheduled time arrives and they are dispatched from here and perform some specific task. So on every task execution, either that is creating, updating or deleting the task from the Google Cloud task queue, it will be counted towards billing. So that was the first one. And the second one is task queue, the number of active queues and their configuration, such as the number of tasks and their retention period is also will be counted towards billing. And the last one is the task payload. The size of the task payload and any data associated with the task will also be counted towards the billing. So you need to keep all of these things in your mind in order to avoid the over usage of Google Cloud Task API. Otherwise, it can be harmful for you. So these were the some key features that you have to keep in your mind before working with Google Cloud Task API. So having this in mind, your API is enabled. Next thing you need to do is to go back from here and simply instead of Google Cloud Task API, search for Cloud Tasks and you will see something like this asynchronous task execution. Simply click this and this will navigate you to a page of Google Cloud Task. I have one queue created named Schedule Post TTL. So when you come here, you have to create your queue. So later we will enqueue the task there and that will still in that queue for their scheduled time arrives. So here to create the queue, you will see the option Create Push Queue. Simply click this and this will navigate you to one more page here. You need to name your queue and select your region that is near you. I have selected the US Central one. so you can select the one that is near to you. Next, after naming the queue and selecting your region, simply create this and a queue will be created just like this. Here I have one. Simply after creating the queue, click this and this will navigate you the queue in here. And here are some more details about the queue. We can refresh the queue, edit the queue, pause the queue and also delete the queue. 
and also purge the queue and the delete task and run task are disabled for now because we have not yet selected any task and there we don't have any rows of task to deal with like to delete or run that from here so here you will see the us central one the location of our queue and the type of our queue and also the task in the queue for now we have nothing but zero and in the task running we have no task running so this will simply just like this and complete it in last minute like the tasks that are completed in last one minute so will be appear the number of tasks in here so we don't have any so we have again the zero and we have again the configurations for the task the location the maximum rate max concurrent 1000 max burst size so these are the configuration for a queue that we have created and that is the task there will appear our task in the queue that will be in queued in the queue and will be appear here and will still there up until their scheduled time is arrived and they are dispatched and next we have the logs and we have to enable the logs and here is also a warning queues may generate a large number of logs and can increase the cost so this feature is off by default so you can enable it on your own race so if you really need to see the logs of your task queue so simply you can enable this and if you don't want to do this and want to avoid the increasing of billings so simply you can avoid this and by default it's off and in the matrix you can see the matrix of your queues the completed failed and least and all of that stuff so that will be the place where our task will be appeared when it's in queued in the queue so that was some simple setup or configuration for the task queue after this then in the next episode we will go for setting up the cloud functions of the firebase and will write the cloud functions and will make the firestore document ttl and you will see it practically in the next episode so that was it for this episode and surely in next episode we will start writing cloud functions and that will finally be the part of the code so that's it and see you in the next episode